Okay. Hello, everyone. My name's Kerry Daigle. If you don't know who I am, your luck has just run out. I'm a PMD Plus along with my wife, Mickey, uh, with the Juice Plus company. Been with the company since 1989. And I've had the uh, opportunity to be very fortunate to be able to have the greatest sponsor in the world and Mickey Daigle, but also to be able to work with some of the greatest people in the world like Lisa Pebbles that you're going to hear from in just a minute. Now, the normal thing for me to do would be to introduce Lisa, but instead of doing that, I'm sure I would leave a lot of good details out. So I'm looking, there's a lot of you, I'm getting messages already. A lot of you are wondering and earlier, who is Lisa? Some of you haven't met her. We've been, uh, haven't gone to a conference, live conference in a while because of this health crisis. So tonight we're gonna to get you get a chance for you to meet her personally. So Lisa, if you don't mind, again, we have a lot of new listeners uh, that are meeting you for the first time. Would you mind sharing your professional background and your position as Director of Global Product Development? Absolutely. So hello everybody. Uh, thank you guys for joining me on this lovely Tuesday evening. Uh, my name is Lisa Peppel. I am the Director of Global Product Development for the Juice Plus Company. I have been with Juice Plus for 12 years, since April of 2008, and have had an amazing opportunity to really touch all of the products that we have. I actually came from a background in agriculture and engineering, so my degree is in chemical engineering. I graduated from Clemson University in 2002. Um, with a degree in chemical engineering and I still love my Clemson Tigers so you guys are gonna have to forgive me for that. Um, but I uh, actually then went to on to work as an engineer and a product manager for a Fortune 50 agribusiness company uh, and really tied my love of agriculture and my family's love of agric agriculture with my engineering love at the Juice Plus company. So one of the things I've been able to do here is really starting with the fields and the farmers be able to kind of innovate every step of the supply chain all the way through to our newest product lines and um, new in, new ingredients that go into our products. So it's been a lot of fun and uh, I really enjoy what I do. Well, Lisa, what are you and your team responsible for at Juice Plus? What are your responsibilities? Our team is really responsible for everything that has to do with the products. So we start with what we call ideation, which is really just imagining what our product line sh could be, should be, and will be. So whether it's looking at new ingredients that could go into the products, different manufacturing opportunities that could maybe improve the nutritional content of the ingredients that we have, working with our growers to um, innovate better either um, products through uh, better drying technology, improving farming technology with them, or even working to optimize the um, species that we use, the varietals of the produce that we use. That's really what our team kind of starts with. So we start with the ideation, figuring out what we need to do. And then we take that idea and we work it all the way through the process. So we work with everybody in the manufacturing lines to ensure that we can make it. We work with our quality teams and our regulatory teams very closely to make sure that the products that we're developing, the ingredients that we're including, are all going to be acceptable in all of the 26 countries that we sell Juice Plus in. So from there, we make sure that the products are good. We do, we work with our Director of Clinical Research, Dr. Manfred Lamprecht, to ensure that all of the products that we have are going to be effective for what we want them to do. So when we first ideate the products, when we first imagine these products, we always have an end goal in mind, something that we want the product to do for the people who are going to take it. So as we go through the development process, we always go back and check to make sure that what we expect the product to do is what it's actually doing. So anytime we include a new ingredient, like a couple of years ago, we actually included lemon peel in our capsules as a replacement for the folic acid that we had in there. So 
before we did that, we made sure to go back to our clinical research and ensure that the lemon peel was delivering the same benefits that the folic acid was before. So through new product development or existing product, what we call renovation, so we call those innovation and renovation, we work on both sides of that to really make sure that the products meet the goals that we have, which are first and foremost, that they are going to be safe and high quality. And secondly, that they're going to have long-term health benefits for the people that are going to take them. So we make sure that we do that on the development side. And then as the products are entering into the market and as you guys get to sell them, we also make sure that we're working closely with the ingredient suppliers, the farmers, and the manufacturers, as well as our quality and regulatory departments to ensure that nothing goes wrong in the process from the time that we've developed it all the way through to when you guys get it at your door. Lisa, uh, referring back to that question, um, the 41 published studies, how important is that for these new listeners that are coming on right now uh, that are not aware that we have 41 published studies? Yeah, in my opinion, it's really what sets us apart from every other company in the world. No other company, no other product has as much and as robust clinical research as we do on our products. So a lot of companies, when they say that their products are clinically proven, what they've done is they've done research or somebody, a third party has done research on an ingredient that's in their product. But you never know when you combine ingredients together, what's going to happen. So what we do is ensure that we are studying our products exactly as you see them. And as I mentioned, every one of our products before we make a change, and I see there's a question about probiotics and enzymes in here, every time we make a change, we make sure that we're testing that product before you ever receive it so that we know exactly what's gonna happen. And no change that we ever make to our product line is going to take anything away from the products that we have, from the experiences that we've already proven through our clinical research. So to me, it really is what sets us apart. Let me move to another subject, being you brought that up. Uh, I've been a sports agent for 45 years, and I received a, an email the other day that stated that uh, six out of 10 high-level athletes that fail drug tests uh, failed the drug test because of a hidden ingredient in a supplement. So would you mind explaining why the NSF certification is so important in reference uh, to our product line? Absolutely. So we, we do have NSF certification, what's called NSF GMP certification, which is a standard certification essentially stating that um, NSF certifies that what is on our label is actually in our product and that there's nothing in our product that is not listed on our label. And they also ensure that there are no harmful contaminants in our products. So those are the three things that this, the general NSF certification does. In addition to that, we offer what's called NSF sport certification. And that certification goes one step further and it actually tests specific batches of our product that are the certified batches for banned substances. So that any athlete that you would be working with could be confident that they are taking products that will not make them pop in a drug screen because we've tested our products for it. And those products aren't manufactured with different ingredients. Those products aren't manufactured in a different way. It literally is the exact same product that we have for everybody. It's just that we take that specific lot, run additional tests on it for athletes who are overly concerned um, or have to take regular drug tests that gives their trainers and themselves a lot more peace of mind. Wow, that's some great information for everyone listening in. I'm going to rewind a little bit and give you a kind of a tough question here and just see um, <clears throat> what the answer would be. What, what makes our, uh, what, what's really some of our challenges that you gonna that you over, need to overcome in developing product? 
Yeah, we encounter a couple of places in product development that are inevitably challenging. The first is regulatory environments around the world. So there are different restrictions for ingredients, for levels of ingredients, for how you can sell products in all places around the world. So one of the first things that we do is to try and have the exact same formulas for our products everywhere. Some that's not possible. So when it's not possible, for example, vitamin D, um, the daily allowance for vitamin D in Europe is only five micrograms. In the US, the daily recommended dose of vitamin D is 20 micrograms. In Europe, the maximum allowable level of vitamin D is 7.5 micrograms. So you can see 20 is definitely bigger than 7.5. <laughs> so we can't have the same products there or the US would be feeling like they were you know, too low um, in their numbers. So in those cases, we make subtle changes to the product based on the regulatory environments. Another place that we struggle sometimes, and I will say that this um, challenging time that we're in right now throughout the pandemic and throughout a lot of the you know, global closings around the world um, is in supply chain. And so we try and make sure that we understand not just where we're getting our products today, but who else could do this for us if we grow too fast or if we encounter challenges in a certain area of the supply chain. So those are probably the two things that we worry about the most, um, but we've been doing this for quite a long time. And so we have a really great team um, that support us all in that. We work very closely with our regulatory team who's led by a brilliant woman by the name of Inga Shapokaite and our quality team who is led by another brilliant woman by the name of Mary Crocker. So when you put these three powerhouse women together, of course you're going to have fantastic products, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> now you've covered pretty much uh, what makes our products and our ingredients uh, so superior to most products out there. But um, if you had to compare us to uh, traditional supplementation on the market, what would you tell someone? Uh, we are vastly different from traditional supplementation because we start with whole foods. Uh, all of our products are whole food based, and that's the foundation of everything we do. It's fruits and vegetables, dehydrated fruits and vegetables. And there is something very special about being able to combine these dehydrated fruits and vegetables together that you just don't get when you combine isolated synthetic vitamins together. So when you look at the clinical research that we have, our outcomes, our results of this clinical research are far superior to the outcomes that you would see from traditional multivitamin supplementation. They're consistent and they show incredibly big benefits. And probably my favorite study that's out right now and it just published is the first paper that we did on the Omega Blend uh, product. And that study showed that in about half the amount of time with about half the amount of omega-3 fatty acids, we were able to increase the omega-3 index of the people who were taking the product to the same level as what is traditionally found in high-dose supplementation. So there is certainly something amazingly powerful about what we call the orchestra effect of all of these nutrients working together. And you just can't get that in traditional supplementation. Wow. Now, a lot of people, Lisa, think I probably would visit one of the farms. If you look behind me, of course, You've got all the fruits and vegetables back there. But here's a good question for you. For everyone that's listening in, I received this by text. Uh, can people go visit the farms that grow our produce? Um, the short answer to that is not just no, but heck no. And the reason for that is because of quality. It's not because we're ashamed of anything that happens on the farm. But if you think about it, every single person, all 188 people that are in this room right now, would probably love to go to the farms, along with all of the other tens of thousands of Juice Plus representatives. Uh, and if we were to open our farms up to that many people, if 
you think about it, you all have specific contaminants that you bring everywhere with you, from your house, from your street, from your car, from the regions that you're in. And if we were to try and control for all of those added contaminants in our fields, it would be an absolute nightmare. So the only people that are allowed in our fields are our growers, our harvesters, myself, and some of our quality people. Now, what I will say is that we have some fantastic videos of the farms. Um, we do allow a trained video crew to come in occasionally. I've been with them on every single shot. I literally buy them individual boots and train them before we go. This is not uh, something that we just grab a couple video crews off the street and, and go into, but um, we do have some amazing videos of our farms uh, that you can see on the Juice Plus YouTube channel. Just go to the Juice Plus YouTube channel, search under Farm Fresh Nutrition. And if it's, it's under the playlists, you'll see it, I think, on playlists or videos. Look under Farm Fresh Nutrition and there's like 11, 15 of them somewhere around there. So you can look at and actually see where we grow. Well, Mickey had mentioned to me that she said, uh, she asked me earlier, she says, Hey, would you mind asking Lisa about the farms? What are they like? How do you do what you're doing? You know, it's, it's almost something that most of us just can't understand because you've got millions and millions of bottles of Juice Plus going out all over the world. Tell us something about the farms. Yeah, they're amazing growers. First of all, a lot of the growers that we've been working with have been with us since the very beginning, since the inception of Juice Plus. And they've gotten to really understand who we are and what we do. As we've grown as a company, we've also included new, new farms. And we like to also bring our produce regionally. So in the US and Canada and now Mexico, we get most of our produce from North America. There are a couple things that are specific that we'll get from other regions but most of our stuff is grown in North America. In Europe, because they have a robust business, we're able to actually source our European produce from Europe now, which that was an interesting proposition to go and find new farmers and new dryer partners in Europe for our European business. In all cases, we have a lot of things that we do with the farmers. So we work to ensure that they, that we understand what kind of pesticides and herbicides they would put onto the produce. Um, we make sure that they're planting the right seeds and that we understand how they're going to pick what they use for water sources and what they're doing to their soil for fertilization. So we obviously, a, a lot of people ask me, you know, what pesticides and herbicides are allowed? Well, it varies. Um, we have, you know, 45 plants that we put into our Juice Plus products. And with each of those plants, there's different things that are allowed and disallowed uh, because of the nature of the plant itself or because of the places that it's grown where things are a little bit more uh, challenging. So, for example, if you have grapes in a humid region, your biggest issue is fungus which is why we don't really purchase grapes from humid regions that often, because we don't want to use fungicides. Uh, but if you have peaches in a nice dry region, one of your biggest challenges are bugs. And so a lot of times you can use pheromone traps in those places to ensure that you are having clean produce for sure. Um, but you're also creating an area where you don't have to worry about, the, the farmers don't have to worry about losing their produce to pests. So it really just depends on where the produce is grown, um, what the produce is, and the conditions specifically at the time. So we, we work very closely with our growers on that. And then through the drying process as well. Um, and we do test a lot of places in our product line. So, our growers will test the seeds to ensure that they are non-GMO. Um, they'll test the seeds to make sure that they're clean, that they don't have microbes already inside of them. They also test their soil. They test their water. Uh, they test so many things during the process. And during the process of growing, they're testing all their soil, their water, all of these conditions to ensure optimum, heart, optimum growth for the produce that they're, they're growing. So it's a pretty complex process. Um, but one that we've become incredibly comfortable with. 
we really work very well with all of these growers. At this point, they know us, they know what we're gonna ask before we ask it and um, are happy to work with us on these things. Well, I know one thing, the, the um, economy has hurt a lot of businesses, not only throughout America, but throughout the world. And a lot of businesses have suffered, but yet somehow, somehow, Lisa, our distribution system just kept moving on and on and on, and everyone continues to get the product. What, what evidently the health crisis has it affected us a whole lot as far as distribution? Has it affected us as far as the ingredients or the products at all? It has not yet. I will say yet because we never know what's going to happen. Um, however, we have put into place a ton of contingency plans to be able to ensure that we will be able to get the best produce possible. Um, we've increased our supply chain uh, structure. We've increased our supply agreements with, uh, with partners to ensure that we get first choice. Um, so essentially, I can tell you right now, um, the people who make our Omega blend have shut their plant down to anybody but us. Uh, we are, and they are a huge plant, <laughs> and they are running our product on four lines because we were getting close. You guys were buying so much of it. We were getting close to running out, and, um, and we weren't going to let that happen. So we went and talked to them. I have personal friendships, personal relationships with a number of people in all of it, and so does everybody else on our team. You know, we, we, these people that we work with are not just manufacturing partners of ours. Um, they are truly pieces of a larger wheel and they understand that. So we were able to work through this pandemic a lot easier than a lot of other companies out there because we had built into place these long-standing relationships that reach not just to one level, but reach all the way from our finished products through to the farmers. So when we're connected directly through every step of our supply chain, we have much better control and much better understanding of what's going on before it becomes an issue. So Lisa, evidently, right now at this stage of where we are worldwide, globally, with this health crisis, NSF certification is like so important, isn't it? It is, yes. It is, because right now there's a lot of companies who are unable to get their normal ingredients. And so they're having to buy from places that they don't know as much about just to keep themselves in business. If you think about it, so many people started making vitamin C supplements when this whole pandemic started because they anticipated that people would want to purchase vitamin C capsules or vitamin C tablets. There's only a small amount of vitamin C available in the world. <clears throat> There's an even smaller amount of natural vitamin C available in the world. And most of the vitamin C that these companies would be purchasing from come from smaller organizations in China that are kind of pop-up organizations. And it, for us, it would not have uh, been to our benefit to, to be switching manufacturing partners or switching ingredient suppliers during this time, because a lot of them, their products got stuck at the border because these, pro these companies that popped up, made some vitamin C, wanted to sell it because it was a premium, because they could make a lot of money on it, got stopped at the US border because it, nothing was being allowed in from China. So these companies had put all their money into this one idea and they couldn't get ingredients. And the great benefit that we have is, is again, like I said, we really don't get anything from China. We do get some things from India, which was a challenge, but we knew ahead of time what was happening. And so we had our, our partners pull in some material. We always have other places that we can get things from, um, which really benefits us um, in the long run. Wow, what a great job. Really, really proud of being associated with this company, Mickey and I, since 1989. Right now, Lisa, what, what are all of you at corporate and in your department especially working on now? What's next for the Juice Plus products? Well, we've got a lot of amazing things that are on the table right now. Um, I will tell you that our we don't really 
increase our product line all that often. You know, we like to keep a very narrow focused product line because it makes it a simpler story. However, when we find some opportunities to really improve the product line, we take those. Um, whether it's through some of the renovation projects that I was talking about, changing some of the existing product lines or adding to those product lines. Um, right now, we're working on five new products. Um, those products are incredibly exciting. Um, and we will be reaching out to probably some of you on this call to help us to better understand how those products might fit into your daily lives uh, soon. <laughs> so I will also say that that is all I'm going to say about that right now, because we're going to be talking about that a little bit more in detail on the Juice Plus Live Home Edition events that are going to start on October 3rd and will continue the following weekend for the US. So my suggestion is if you want to learn more about that, tune in to the Juice Plus Live at Home event. There we go. Promote, promote, promote. <laughs> how about any well, I can't spill the beans here. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about just sharing with everyone in closing today, Lisa? We really appreciate all of this information. It's very informative. And, and uh, everyone that's tuned in, I can see big smiles on everyone's face. Uh, how about closing comments? Any closing comments for all the listeners? Yeah, I would love to just say thank you for, uh, for being here, for being interested in our products and for allowing us to be able to do the things that we love. I truly have a passion. This is not a job for me. This is really my passion. This is what I absolutely feel called to do is to change people's lives by the products that I can help develop, that my team and I can really develop together. And without you guys, I would not be able to do this. So if you have any questions about the products, if you have any thoughts or ideas, you can always feel free to reach out to us. Um, a lot of times the easiest way is to reach out through the Juice Plus customer care line. So customercare at juiceplus.com. If you have specific product questions, they will pass them on. If you have specific product ideas, they will absolutely pass them on. Uh, and we love to hear that. So anything that we can do to help you guys, um, we would love to be able to do. What an amazing night. Thank you so much for your time, Lisa, tonight. And we've just picked up such wonderful information that's going to help everyone that was listening in. And I know many of you wish you probably had another 100 or 200 people listening in tonight. We're going to put this video together for some of you to have an interest in getting more of your team to listen in. But Lisa, we appreciate you so very much. Thanks again. And Mickey, if you don't mind, we could take this off a of recording.